we didn't really have any money at that time, so we were just eating bread and jam for about a month. Yeah, we were in a bad state. Jake Robertson moved to Ten Kenya with his twin brother when he was 17. Last year, Jake won Houston Half Marathon and was second in the Great North Run. Jake has proved himself and proved a lot of people wrong, but he's still hungry for much, much bigger goals. I'm very excited that I got to meet Jake and talk to him. I'm really excited for you to hear his story. So, without further ado, here is Jake's story. All right, Jake. Yep. Thanks for letting me interview. Thanks for uh, this time letting me in your house, your beautiful mm -hmm. place in Iten. Uh How are you today? I'm, I'm all right. I'm, uh, yeah. We just Sunday. played some pool. Yeah, Sunday. With some so friends, chilling. yeah. It's chilling. Yep. Yeah. Weekend vibes and, you know, it's good to get, get away from training and every you know everything yeah yeah um you have been in Iten for the last 12 years so far yeah 12 years yeah and i mean your story is a sort of a legend i think because like you came here with your brother zane when you're yeah. 17. yeah we came to kenya when we were 17 and yeah. as for the foreigners we were the first Right. To do what we've done, staying in Iten. Right. And we've been successful doing right. what we've done. So, right. yeah, sure, if, you, if we had a failed majorly, then it wouldn't have been a, a legendary story. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the more success we gain, the more a story gains a, a legacy, you know. Yeah, I mean, story is still going, it's still evolving. Yep, it is. And uh, I feel like I haven't really touched what... I could in the future mm -hmm. on uh, performance wise so mm -hmm. we'll see what I'm capable of yeah. yeah in terms of your performance and you talked about your potential you ran uh, 208 26 in Lake Biwa yes on debut and the, yep. oh yeah first marathon right yeah and you ran 20, 59 57 half marathon in England the great north run yes uh, just that last 600 meter with Mo Farah at, at that race, right? Mm, no. No, that's no, the other the one. No, it was the year before. Oh, yeah, yeah that's the year before, right. Ah, Mo, right. It was the last 200 Mo kicked, yeah. 250 that he kicked off on me. And, yeah. Yeah. And those are amazing times. And it's, but you said, as you said, you still have a lot more to prove. And, I did some research before coming to the interview. I watched saw uh, the interview you did with Black Toe Running at the Black Toe Running in oh, Canada. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And one of those things that stuck out to me was uh, you said you still have 15 more years in you, you, you think, as yeah. a marathon runner. Yeah, 10, 10 to 15. Yeah. Anywhere in between, depending on what comes up, I might decide yeah. the last day, but I've got a lot to achieve. And yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not going to be very happy until I've achieved everything yeah. that I want to, so, yeah. And the interview you said, by now you thought you'd, you'd have won a gold in Olympics. Yeah, I mean, every 18-year-old yeah. who's starting out, and, I mean, I started when I was 14, so, yeah. you know, a 14-year-old believes everything's easy, and then, you know, step by step, as, you know, from a junior to a senior, yeah, you start to realize it's not. Yeah, but if you if you're still progressing, then you know that little bit of hope, mm -hmm. you know your dreams stay alive, and obviously mine have stayed alive into this professional career, and now I'm making a decent enough living out of it, and yeah, yeah my dreams are still alive. Yeah, that dream is still gold in Olympics. Oh yeah, marathon or does it have to be marathon? Or? Marathon has been. Um, it used to be five thousand, then it was ten. Yeah. Marathon is um, a new project of mine, and yeah. you know, a golden marathon major as well would be an amazing feat. Yeah. Um, any race I touch, I'm always going for the win. So. Yeah. 
I mean, I just want to stack up as many wins as many records as I can before I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And go back to the starting a little bit. Uh, when we're out in the market, exploring the roots in the highlands. Yeah. <laughs> plus, plus 3,000 uh, meters of altitude. Yeah. I think I think you're crazy, and you, you, you guys are crazy. You're trying to get even higher than you can, but I I admire that uh, passion. Um, you could tell by the the spirit showing up there how excited I was. Yeah, I know. you know it's 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 really like that yeah. because as well as the altitude, we're going to a real village, you know, real yeah. wilderness, and yeah, that's the way you ten used to be. Yeah. So for me. To get out of E10 is like leaving the city. Yeah. Going to the mountains where, you know, you're just back to basics. Yeah. As you know, survival, pure instinct, and just, you know, fire, campfire with the guys, cooking over the fire, <laughs> real basic living. and Catch some rats. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> No, you we'll hope, we'll you go hope, back to it later. You, <laughs> hope, you hope the rats don't come, but yeah, yeah just... I think... <laughs> But when I asked you during the drive if you could go back and you could make a decision again, I asked you if you'd choose to come to E10 again. again. Um, and you said you're not sure because it was really tough. Could you kind of elaborate on that and how tough it was when you came here? What without, I mean you know, by that yeah. Yeah, is that if I had to go through everything I went through again, yeah. I couldn't do it. At mm. this point in my life, I couldn't do it. Knowing that. Yeah. I know everything that's coming yeah. and what I went through back then was a, a lot. Yeah. You know, and the you know, mental struggles, you know, physical struggles. We got so sick that we almost died. Yeah. Um, you know, society issues and judgment issues. You know, you're in a different culture. Yeah. You have to learn your way and, you know, not overstep the boundary and... Back then, E10 didn't really, you know, culturally accept foreigners. Mm. So, yeah, there was a lot of um, a lot of disputes and stuff, and we got caught up in that. And then there was election violence, and um, yeah, yeah, you know, we went to live somewhere else after when it was safe. And uh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of struggles. So that I couldn't redo. I just. Mentally couldn't tolerate, handle it. If yeah, I mean, if you knew I was coming. Yeah. At at that yeah. p point in time of our lives, we were so determined, and yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone can go through that twice. Yeah. Yeah, the Kenyans know what we've been through, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they they respect us for it, but going through that twice, you just can't. It's a once in a lifetime thing. It makes you tough. And after that, you are tough, but you don't want to take a back step in life. Right. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't all pretty. No. Just say. It's not. It's not. It wasn't easy, of course. <laughs> Everybody knows that when you move yeah. to Africa at sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. No family, no relatives. My brother. I mean, yeah, I mean, me just, and my brother. just your brother. Yeah. Yeah. And it was that determination and desire and passion that kept you guys going. Yeah, and every time we got knocked down, yeah, there was a slight, like hope. Something yeah. got gifted to us. You know, I don't know how, but there was a a race we performed well in locally, yeah. or um, just after election violence when we we're, you know, at our lowest point. You know, feeling like this isn't working out, and you know we're gonna keep struggling. Yeah. A manager came through and said he was going to take us to Europe for the Shit. first time. So, yeah. you know, we got out a chance to qualify for World Juniors, went yeah. to Europe. I qualified, didn't get selected in my national team for some reason, but I'd qualified. Mm -hmm. So, you know. It gave you some hope and Gives you hope and keeps you going, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you told me it took you two years to have a breakthrough. And during the two-year period of time, no one really believed in you guys. No, E10, um, the athletes, they were all laughing at us. And, you know, they would start rumors about us and all that. But they didn't know what was behind. Yeah. You know, there was one rumor that we were smelly, dirty, 
Mazungus. <laughs> and the reason behind yeah. that is we only had we had very minimal training gear, mm. with very minimal training shoes. Mm -hmm. Shoes now had holes in them. The training gear was all stolen from us in Captagat. So if you get everything stolen from you, Shit. you're left with one of everything. Yeah. What do you use? You use Same that. Thing. Yeah. So they were judging us and then laughing at us, saying that you know we'd never make anything. And they didn't know, most of them didn't know how young we were. Mm, right, so right. that had something to do with it. It was right. like, oh, you know, I'm 18, I'm 17 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, come our breakthroughs. But how did you deal with that kind of negativity and judgment of other people? Uh, we, were, we were lucky that we were so focused and surrounded by good people um, kind of encouraging us. Yeah. That we didn't, we didn't really know what the the people outside were saying, until later on, and when we heard that, it was even just more like determination to prove them wrong. Because you can you can go and cry, you can you know, use it as motivation. We just took it as motivation. Like one day, you know, I was like, hey, you're gonna see. Mm. I'm not training for next week. I'm training for four years from now. Mm. And, you know, and two years came by and then things started to change. Mm -hmm. Four years came by and we started to beat them all. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, we've arrived. How did that feel to prove yourself that, uh, that you're right in the long term? Um, nothing really describes that. I mean, you've overcome so many challenges on the way up mm -hmm. and now you've gained the respect of the public mm -hmm. and it's almost like you're, you've created um, the lifestyle you were you know you were aiming at uh, maybe you haven't ha got everything yet but you're on your way there so I mean it, no matter where you're at in life, you're always going to want more. True. But yeah. yeah, to to have the respect of the public here is um, I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, and I know that when I go to races, that the public are cheering for me now. Yeah, they know your story. They know the story. They know our struggles, and um, I feel like this is almost like E10 is like my little country. Yeah. Almost, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they cheer for me probably harder than. New Zealand does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're still in your journey. It's, I th the movie just started. Like, if your story's a movie, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. One day I hope to make a, um, a reenactment of my life and, um, oh, my name's Ains. Yeah. Our story, you know, at first maybe a book. Yeah. Maybe a movie later on, but yeah. definitely um, some of the some of the stories that will come out in the book and the movie people haven't heard and yeah i always get talking and telling new stories and my friends haven't heard them all yeah so, <laughs> it's pretty interesting shit yeah hopefully i'll get to see that movie 15 years later after you've achieved a lot there's definitely the got to be a high point to finish it yeah yeah and speaking of the stories um Tell me about the flaming reds. If you want to, could you share that? Oh, that that goes back to my childhood. Yeah, because I feel like that's the um, that's a funny story, but also it kind of shows how you're also very active when you're little. I don't know why, but it's like me and my brother. Wherever we go, we have this history with rats. <laughs> so, I grew up a lot on my grandparents' farm. Yeah, they had a wreckers yard with broken down cars and all that out back of a small forest so this forest um, we would usually you know stack up wood for months and my grand my grandfather would um, set a fire and the rats would all you know be camping and uh, living in the woods so they'd come out flaming and um, my grandparents um, gave me and my brother sticks to go chasing them with so we were just, you know, four or five years old running around chasing these rats in the forest. 
they were as big as cats. Yeah, they were pretty big. <laughs> um, oil drenched in oil. Drenched fire in on oil their body. And fire, just, yeah, fire, flaming rats around the forest. And <laughs> we were chasing them around, you know. Yeah. My grandparents sold the farm when we were seven years old. And that was the end of the flaming rats for us. But it was good. It was good um, upbringing on the farm. And, you know, um, our parents are busy working. But yeah. Yeah, um, I think as, they, they might have given you some good Arabic foundation work right there. A lot, a lot, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's tough work on a farm, so <laughs> I'm happy for that. Yeah. And uh, also a good diet, you know. Oh, yeah. A really healthy diet, you know. Right from the soil. Yep. All organics and stuff, you know. And then uh, while we came to Kenya, we've lived in some pretty bad places where the rat story continues, you know. <laughs> Some places have had rats, you know, infestation, and um, one place we lived had no power. So me and Zane worked out the noises where the rats were at night. Yeah. Sometimes we couldn't sleep. Yeah. And we'd hear them dancing in the pots, we'd call it. Oh, okay. And so we knew where they were just by the sound of where they were in the house. Holy shit. And we'd come out with candle, and we were like hunting rats by candlelight. We got a few. <laughs> we got a few. Shit, you guys have some no. history with rats. No. And <laughs> <laughs> I had to, you know, I had to stomp a few. Um, yeah. I had shoes on because if you get bitten, it's not going to be good. Oh, uh, yeah. But yeah, hunting rats with candlelight. Um, I'm sure that will be in the movie or book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, just one of the small stories inside our story, you know? Yeah. And it's in your family, it's just you and your brother Zane? Yeah. Do you have other siblings? Just you and Zane? Just me and Zane. I, I'm sure there were a lot of things uh, that your family was maybe worried about when you, you guys told your parents that you guys are coming to Kenya. I read somewhere that your parents thought you guys had a, a round way ticket. We, you actually had a one way ticket when you came? Oh, to no, we, we did have the round ticket. Like, oh, you did have? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Um, it was for after Mombasa, the trip back. And we knew when we came out here that we were going to stick around. Yeah. And make this a uh, long-term thing, especially if we were seeing the improvement. Yeah. And we were. So after Mombasa, we pushed out the ticket. I think it was two or three times until the ticket couldn't be pushed out anymore. Mm -hmm. And then we said, hey, things are going good here. Cancel that ticket. And our parents... And no choice, they had to cancel it. And, sure. uh, you know, we're keeping in contact with them, but everything kept improving. And then election violence happened. And, yeah. of course, their concerns were, you know, what they're seeing on the TV is always, they're always going to show the worst. Right. Of right. what's happening. So News, yeah. they were very concerned. And, you know, we had power, no power here in E10 for two weeks. Shit, yeah. So as the cell phone was running out, we gave him a call and was like, hey, it's going to be a blackout for like a while. Yeah. You're not going to hear from us, but everything in E10 is cool. Yeah. Nobody's after us. And, you know, then 10 days, no phone. So, yeah. Shut I guess up. that was probably their most worried time. But Yeah. But they're now all... What, they feel much better about your situation. Oh, I mean, right? nobody can say anything. Yeah. You know, we, we made it. Like, yeah. That's good. You know? Yeah. I wouldn't have this life I'm now. I wouldn't have my wife yeah. if I hadn't been here. So, you know, so many blessings in this journey of a mind that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. You know? Who, when you think of someone that you're grateful for, who comes up in your mind? My wife, man, number one. Yeah. Like, we've been together since 2011, May 2011. Yeah. Just, you know, growing together and we've both grown into better athletes, better people. Yeah. Yeah. Grateful for my wife. And now we have this house and we're starting a running camp together, you know. it's uh, That's right, yeah. Moving up in life and we're both still running really good. And yeah. We don't see the end of our progress, so yeah, it's, things are going good. Yeah. 
Maggie ran in Hamburg this year, right? Yeah, Maggie was second in Hamburg this year. Yeah. 226. Another PB. Yeah. Um, yeah. Terrible conditions. So mm. she's definitely got more. Mm -hmm. I think the next one, she's going to be 223, 224 at least. Yeah. Who knows, maybe 221. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sky's the limit. Yeah. 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 <sighs> she's had two rough marathons, tough conditions, a little bit like me. Mm -hmm. My first one was in 28 degrees, mm -hmm. hot, you know, humid. And Canada won't, it was, it was freezing, right? Canada was around one degree, yeah. two degrees, and had a wind, so it felt like a minus four. Yeah. So... Yeah, I got hypothermia and still yeah. somehow finished. <laughs> but waiting for the race with the good conditions and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully Tokyo next year. Be good Tokyo one. next year is still far. I got, yeah. got another marathon in between there, that's for sure. Maybe two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Tokyo is so next August, so. End of year and then end maybe one in the beginning of next year. and Yeah. You haven't made your mind yet, right? You're going to announce no. Christian. No. Uh, um, yeah. Coming back from my stress fracture, I've um, decided to really take my time. Yeah. Make sure I'm 100%. And I'm, I'm actually thinking of going straight into a marathon because I feel like my last two marathons may have been a little bit hindered at performance by racing before. Mm -hmm. Some 10Ks. 10Ks and then half, half marathons. marathons. Yeah. And I feel like race by race I was losing 5% mm. maybe more of what I actually was capable of mm -hmm. so pushing pretty hard in the body and yeah awesome um, preparing for your marathon this year or beginning of next year um, well let me, let me just rephrase it. what are things that you kind of changed from when you just started and what do you do much better now or like things that you thought, okay, this is. Are I'm we doing talking really about well. 2007 to now? Well, maybe that's too far. That's that's yeah. yeah. I mean, um, it's a constant journey. Yeah. Like you have to never stop learning. You have to make changes as your body changes. You know. Yeah. Um, things I know now I never knew back then. I wish I was more patient mm. with young age and would take my time at things and let it let the shape come naturally. Mm -hmm. Were you doing too much mileage? Uh, a little bit. Sometimes, you know, I experimented with high mileage. I experimented with, you know, a lot of speed uh, yeah. sessions, track sessions. Um, and also now I'm a marathoner, you know, I'm no longer a track runner. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn the event. And I think I had a good introduction to marathon uh, because I was training for the marathon actually maybe three or four years before I ran my first. Sure. I didn't realize it, but mm -hmm. I wasn't training for the track. Mm. I was training for marathons. So mm -hmm. now that I'm here, it's uh, definitely going to be my best event. Yeah. But um, yeah, just constantly learning. Any, any advice you, you'd like to give any beginners out there who are yeah. just starting to run? advice just beginning to run yeah. um have fun with it yeah have fun that's a good one of course push your body you know enjoy enjoy pushing your body because if you don't enjoy it and enjoy you know running faster or beating your you know your times then maybe maybe competing is not for you maybe you should just enjoy uh fitness you know mm. But if you enjoy running, you'll push your body, you know, a couple of times a week. Mm -hmm. Each time you race, you know, try and beat your time from last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. Have fun. That's, that's definitely the beginner's tip, you know. Yeah. Are you having fun? Still? I'm still having fun, man. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have fun. Yeah. I'm always actually laughing come the nervous moments before the start because yeah. I'm looking around and we're like we've put in the work you know so much training as you know I think the le the less work you put in the more nervous you are because mm -hmm. you know but if you're 100% ready 
for some reason you're still nervous, I'm there laughing about it. I'm like, man, we, we trained for this and now we feel this bad. I just want to hear that gun and then everything disappears. You feel good. You That's the fun. moment to celebrate and have fun. Yeah. yeah, you have fun during the race. You're looking mm. around and, you know, it's like a game of mass. You know, you got 42.2K to play with. Yeah. Is he going to blow up? Has he gone too soon? Should I let him go? Should I chase him? You know, so mm. many things. Yeah. And that, that to me is fun. Yeah. yeah. I like playing with it. And, and I also like playing with my own, you know, potential. Mm-hmm. And what race, if you could choose one major marathon to win within the next five years, what would be, what would be like the, I really want to win this marathon? Olympics would be bloody good. <laughs> <laughs> Olympics has to oh, be, yeah. you know, Olympics is major. Yeah. But... I feel that very, very realistically also Boston Marathon has been mm. calling me. Mm-hmm. My training and how good I am on hills, hills. and yeah. that around here is, you know, um, everybody's been saying one day you need to race Boston. Mm. And that coming from Kenyans who are good on hills. They know how good you're know, at the hills. They know. I, I destroy them on hills. <laughs> so for that and for them to be saying you need to run Boston. Mm. It's so, uh you know, it's a big it's a big thing and I feel like Boston has a very, you know, long out like big history, so Yeah. It'll be a very awesome uh race to win. Yeah. It'll yeah. be amazing. And not many non African runners win Boston. Yeah. I mean exactly. I mean pretty much all major marathons yeah. these days. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh Boston's uh you know it's a tactical marathon and right. So that that would be nice too, but I really want to run a fast time, so yeah, I have to make uh, very, you know, big choices in the coming years of, because we only get a chance at you know two, three max marathons a year. Right. So big choices to be made, and do I go for time this time? Do I race for the win this time? You know, and um, mm. weighing everything up, yeah. Last question. Yeah. Um, well, c- two questions that are kind of similar in a way. Um, what's the legacy you want to leave behind? That's the first question. The second question is if you could say, if you could put a one sentence on a billboard in like New York Times Square that everyone can see, Ooh. what would that be? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get past Kawhi Leonard's uh, quotes right now, like bored man gets paid and <laughs> what? bored man gets paid. Bored man gets paid. Bo- bored man, yeah. meaning the rebound, the rebound man. You yeah. know, because he's in there, you know, in the in the rough and you know working hard to get that rebound yeah. and try again. You know. Yeah. Um, but the legacy I want to leave behind is that anybody from any culture, any ethnicity you know like just through hard work can do what they set out to do you know mm-hmm. it's it's like a, it's quite a worldwide belief that the africans the east africans are you know so talented and stuff they they really put in work yeah they have a focus like no one else no other country in general out here and that's where they get a lot of uh, depth, you know. That's where mm. so many more people are doing it here. Yeah. And sure, if their body type's suited towards an event, then they'll do very good in numbers. But anybody with talent from any country, anywhere, through hard work, sacrifice, and focus, can get to the level where they want to be. You know, I'm, I'm one of them. Yeah. Um, th- so that's that's the legacy I want to leave behind, and that's why I'm you know always trying to motivate you know next generation or even this generation that I'm in because everybody's got goals as small as they are or you know whatever they think you know goals are goals and they're there to be achieved. So yeah, I like I like trying to inspire people. Yeah, yeah, that's actually my motivation. So yeah. Um, quotes 
Hmm. <laughs> I got so many, man. <laughs> well, as, as you're thinking, I'm sure there's so many people who are getting inspired by your story and from your Instagram. So I think you're do already doing a really great job, but I can't wait to see more, like you said, more, you know, goals that you're, you know, from things you're going to achieve next year. Yeah. Very, very excited for you. Yeah. I'm excited about the future. <laughs> when you, when you, you know, here and now, when you're in rehabilitation phase, it's always, uh, mm. it's always tough, and you have to be patient. It's kind know? of like underworld time, it's, yeah. It's the, limbo, it's, limbo. It's the time people yeah. outside of you know being close to me don't appreciate. They don't get to see the hard work that we put in, mentally and physically. You know, on our on our way back to fitness and um, it's always so hard to be patient yeah so, um, yeah but maybe that's your quote, quote it's hard to be patient well, patience yeah <laughs> I've learned that over years you know yeah and I'm still learning it because every time every time you get shut shut down you know there, there's a road back and uh, yeah still learning that that's a very good quote actually i just thought of <laughs> what is it that's ah, stupid man uh, there's no? there, there's more than one way to make a pancake if you know what i'm saying there's more than one way to make a pancake meaning just because you know you read between the lines just uh -huh. because I took this route. Mm -hmm. I went to Kenya mm -hmm. at 17. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that that's the only way to make it. And of course, there's athletes who have made it other ways. Mm -hmm. People have to find, you know, this next generation have to find their way. Their ways. Mm -hmm. They have to train and learn and see what works for them. Yeah. That's the only way. Not, n not everything's going to work for everybody. There's no magic figures, you know. Hey. You're not only fast, but wise, man. <laughs> I was taught by a few wise people. So, uh, <laughs> In fact, in 2007, Shaheen told me, hey, yeah. I know I'm the world record holder. And what's working for me in training mm. isn't going to work for you. You're 17. Mm. You know, don't join me every day. It's not going to work. He cared genuinely for us, you know, mm -hmm. so gave us some advice and um, also Patrick Singh, Kipchoge's coach. Mm -hmm. He said the same when I went to join Kipchoge in 2010. Mm -hmm. He's like, my best athlete, you know, he's older than you. You're still this age, you know, you, mm. you need to train like that. So take your easy days easier, come mm. to our sessions ready and I'll, you know, advise you. Mm. And that re w really helped out, you know. Yeah. There's no one way to make pancakes. There's more yeah. than one way yeah, to make pancakes. Yeah, there's more than one way to make a pancake. Hopefully. Man, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's actually wow. a really good one. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I think that's a good way to end the interview. And thanks so much. I'm just, like I told you before, before coming to Kenya for my first time in 2015, just watching you guys' documentaries and reading about you guys really inspired me. And I can't wait for your next 15 years and just can't wait to see your movie with my kid. Uh, you know, yeah. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay, man. Yeah. Thanks.
They came here when they were about 16. I think they went through various trauma in trying to settle in at that age, uh, being away from their homeland and their family. I'm sure also had its own impact. And in a sense, on an experimental level, they will show if you live in uh, an athletic culture, an athletic environment, even though you're not genetically belonging to that culture or that environment, what impact can it have on your life?